Uh, we are here with David Lopez, CEO of AGS, which is a gaming technology company, a games company, uh, slot machines, class two and three, table games and other products. Uh, and David, uh, it wouldn't be 2020 if we didn't have to talk about COVID. So let's uh, give me your take on how you see COVID playing out over um, the, the near term, midterm for you and for the industry. Well, well Frank, uh, thank, thanks for having us and i um, ha happy to do this again. Um, you know, it's interesting because in 2018, uh, it was towards the end of the year and, and Julia and Chemo could tell you this. I said, hey, when we used to talk to investors, I said, just wait for 2020. It's gonna be very good for us. You know, we've made these investments <laughs> And and um and R and D teams in Atlanta and in Australia, and um we really have a lot of belief in, in our team and what kind of products are going to come out. So we're really looking forward. Not like we want to skip 2019, but we're really looking forward to 2020. Little did I know, right? I mean, little did I know what what we were going to run into here. Um, obviously, COVID is you know it's it's rocked the industry. Um, sadly, you know, goes without saying with so many, um, people getting sick, um, lives lost, et cetera. It's, it's to, to even sort of think about it from a business context at times, right. Uh, doesn't, doesn't really, um, you know, honor what's happened in, in as far as the, the global impact to economies, health, lives, et cetera. Um, but, uh, for us, uh, there was no playbook, as I like to say, you know, I mean, if I, I can pick up the phone and if I could call, you know, Joe Lottie or uh, um, which, who I, I had spoken to and Mark Yosloff and, and the late Tim Parrott, you know, none of them would say, oh, well, hey, you know, I've been through this before. So it was, it was uncharted waters for us. Um, I'm proud of the team, um, our board, how we, how we pivoted quickly. We dealt with things um, in, a, in a productive and expeditious manner. I think the industry as a whole did a good job, um, both operator um, and, and vendor. Uh, but throughout it all, one of the big things was, Frank, it, it was clearly we wanted to focus on the long-term health of the company, right? But we had to at the same time think about the health of our employees and our extended family, which means everyone at home. So we click, quickly moved to work, work from home, like many other companies, as you might know. Um, we are still largely working from home. Um, I'm here at the office today, as you can see by the alligator up on the uh, thing. I don't have one of those home. And um, uh, uh, so, you know, we pivoted quickly and we made a lot of uh, difficult decisions um, and put ourselves in, in good position to exit the COVID, um, you know, pandemic. And, and sort of be able to sort of propel ourselves um, into late 2020 and early 2021 with uh, what we knew was coming in 2020, which was great products, you know? And how do you think if you project into 2021 um, and, you know, you have maybe more of a return to normal, uh, how do you think that plays out? You, you're, you're using the right terminology, Frank, when you say more of a return to normal, right? More of a return to normal. I think that 2021 um, will not be, it, it will not be 2019. Uh, um, I think it's largely recognized in the industry, um, both on the operator and vendor side, that it won't be quite the same. Now, there are some regional operators that are setting records, right? Um, and, and we know the reasons for that, right? You know, they can compress uh, marketing and other expenses um, and in a regional environment where they don't depend on high-end table play and they depend on slot revenue. Slot revenue is, is setting records. Expenses are down. Um, you know, they've eliminated some amenities for, for a short period of time, temporarily, um, and they're doing very well. So for some operators, <laughs> they're doing, they're setting record numbers. For others, you know, it's a different story. For the vendor side, I think that 2021 will not be 2019, but we'll be on our way back to 2019. And that um, 2022, we could see 
uh, ourselves back in good position or even exceeding, uh, perhaps exceeding 2019's um, performance. Um, for us, we've got a little bit of online uh, revenue, um, which was helpful, but it's still a very you know small portion of our business. Um, what we really need to see is we need to see slot uh, recurring revenue come back, which it's doing pretty well right now, as you know. Um, capital purchases of slot machines, uh, we know that's not that's not back in shape yet, and it's going to be um, it's going to be a minute before that happens. And then, of course, the return of a robust uh, table game business, um, you know, for the operators will be important to us as well. The you have a, what are your strategies and priorities going forward? Assuming again a return to something approaching normal. Yeah. So um, our priority is really, honestly, without saying, hey, you know, here's our strategic plan and, and this is what we're doing over the next two or three years. Our, our strategies or our priorities are really based around getting back to business. Um, one of the things that, you know, we've tried to ensure is that even in, in you know, no secrets, we did furloughs. We did some layoffs, right? But what we tried to do is we tried to preserve, um, conserve and preserve cash, right? Um, reduce expenses, uh, continue to have a robust R&D team, and so keep them intact, and Frank, keep our culture intact, because we want our employees to be ha as happy as they can be in this environment, right? Um, we want them to feel like they continue to be part of something very important as they work from home, right? Which is not easy as you're sitting home and you're in, in, a, in an office that you probably didn't use much uh, over the last three, four or five years, and now you're spending every day in it. For some of us, office is the kitchen table, right? So uh, that's my preferred place, but, but we want our employees to feel like they're just as much a part of our team and that we're focused you know, on our business and on moving forward. We want them to feel like that, just like they always have, or, or more so as we exit the pandemic. So our focus really is on the team, continue to be innovative, continue to release great products, right? And of course, execution. And, um, you know, I'll really tip my cap to, to our, our sales team. We just, we were just doing um, uh, a like interview or a, you could say at a town hall with another vendor just now. And you know, I had said, hey, our head of sales um, and his team, Adam Whitehurst and his team, have done a fantastic job when there was no business, right, Frank? Zero business. Casinos were closed. You can't call on, on casinos when they're closed, right? Maybe a few. Um, Adam and the team were feverishly working to either train themselves up and prove them th themselves via like um, programs like Compete to Create, um, or uh, actually just you know achieving mastery of some sort in something like a Salesforce.com, where maybe they were they weren't great, they were good, you know, at Salesforce.com, and, and now they are now you know they have mastery of it, and they actually had some people that on our team that really became sort of black belts at it and train the rest of the team. Uh, so I think we're ready, more ready than ever before, Frank. And uh, our focus is on execution at this point. Uh, we, we think we've, you know, we're very confident we have the products. Um, we're confident we have the right team. Um, you know, there's always gonna be tweaks and additions, um, but essentially uh, execution is where our focus is right now. Uh, because you started as such a small, narrow company, you started basically as a class two slot machine company. Yeah. Uh, you've had a lot of room to grow both in diversifying product and en entering new, new jurisdiction. Where are you along that continuum? Uh, and where do you think you'll be two or three years out? So, you know, where we're at right now is we're doing pretty well as far as touching most jurisdictions, right? Um, you know, we're just about approved everywhere. Whereas, you know, three, four years ago, when you talked to us, we, we couldn't have said the same thing. Now our focus is on tapping deeper into every jurisdiction we're at. But for example, 
I can say, you know, we've got Canada is, is largely untapped first, a lot of potential there. Um, Pennsylvania, uh, you know, Washington, and Nevada. Yes, I said Nevada. <laughs> um, Nevada is uh, a huge opportunity for us going forward. But what's happened, Frank, and, and what's happened, you know, really what the shift has been, I wish I had some of my props that I usually have for some, our, our town hall calls where I can hold it up to the screen. But <clears throat> we went from six months ago, six to nine months ago, having a very narrow selection of products that we can sell to the industry. We have a lot of recurring revenue in certain jurisdictions, but we really only had one premium recur product, Colossal Diamonds or, or you know, popularly known as Big Red, right? That was our only product that we could get out there with and compete in a recurring revenue space outside of class two. Do we have recurring revenue games in class three? Of course, but not in a big way. Before the pandemic, right before the pandemic, we released Starwall, which I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with and probably saw at the last G2E, right? Um, Starwall was doing fantastic. And since casinos have reopened and we've put more in, um, it, it's probably exceeding our expectations, uh, doing fantastic numbers. And there's something now that we can compete across the board in all these jurisdictions you're talking about not just in a for sale environment, but in a recurring revenue way as well. So now we have Starwall, we have our Rise Cabinet, which is also a lease only uh, product. And then the Curve is for sale, but there's a premium version of our Curve product that will be lease only as well. It's our, our premium Curve packaging and games will also be lease only. So we've got a lot of tools in the toolbox that we didn't have before um, and we feel really good about that. So we're gonna attack that from a jurisdictional point of view, diving deeper into those jurisdictions, but also it helps us in a place like Oklahoma, where as you know, we had a little bit of a dip in performance, affected the company, affected our revenue, affected of course our stock price, but now we're going in there when we're able to compete now in a much uh, bigger way, with with more a more robust product line okay so uh more robust product line more recurring revenue developing the jurisdictions that you've entered yeah. uh, how significant will would are or can be your table game business yeah so um when i think about table games We've got a, a lot of great products from a progressive point of view. Um, we have some great proprietary products and the momentum there was tremendous going into COVID, right? Obviously we hit, we hit a, a considerable speed bump with the pandemic and we're, we're, we're gonna come out of that just fine. I think what's interesting now is that, you know, with casino businesses on pause for months, right? for three to six months for some folks, some, some folks it's longer. Um, towards the end of the year, we're going to be releasing our second shuffler ever, right? So now we have a portfolio of shufflers, if you will, but it'll be our second shuffler. And this one uh, called PAX um, will be a single deck specialty game shuffler. And this is really where I believe, and I, I'm confident this will turbocharge that business. Um, we've already got our infrastructure in place for the table games business. We don't need to add a whole bunch of infrastructure. We have a service team, uh, ran by a guy named Mike Skorzoff, who has, has worked with us and who I've known for 22 years, only 22 years, as he likes to say, right. and he knows how to run, not just a slot division, which he's been doing, but he came from shuffle way back. That's where I met him. And he has complete mastery of running a, a shuffler service team. So our infrastructure's in place, sales, service, ops, production, um, it's all about getting that puppy out there, letting the world uh, you know, lay, lay their eyes on it. If it's, it should be no different than the response that we got at G2E, which is, when can I have that? And oh, by the way, when's your third shuffler come out, right? <laughs> um, they're already looking forward to the next one, 
the demand is there. Uh, there there's, there's a real appetite for, for AGS to, to release that product. And I think that, Frank, is, is where the potential of that division really takes off. Not to say Pure Tables wasn't doing it, because it was. Uh, there's been some speculation in some quarters that you might go private again, given your stock price. Any consideration to that? Is that is that an offer you're making, or is that something? Is is that some group you're putting together? <laughs> so so I Frank, I mean, I think um, if you know, I've probably heard since before our IPO. Um, I've heard that most companies in the space are buying us. I've heard that we're going private. And then I also heard we were going public, which we did, right? Um, and, and the only one that came to fruition was a thing that was in our plans, which was IPOing the company and going public. Um, when, in, in 2019, you know, we definitely hit a, a bump in the road with our, with, uh, our situation in Oklahoma. Um, we've worked to resolve that and improve it over the past you know, year or so. We're confident, as I said earlier in the discussion, uh, that our product line, it, it, we're, we're, we're no longer going you know, to a gunfight with a butter knife anymore, right? We have tools in the toolbox that can help us perform and really soar in Oklahoma. We're confident that we have what we need now. We didn't really have it before. So although there's rumors out there about go private and, and such, um, you know, it's, it's probably not something that, A, we could comment on if we were doing it, but we are focused at, at, at really increasing shareholder value, right? Um, our shareholders are important to us. They're, they, they fall under the umbrella of all stakeholders, just like our employees, our customers, everybody, right? And um, we're sub, I would imagine, I haven't looked, you know, we're sub $4. Um, we're very confident that even you know in in the in the near term that that's going to change for us um our performance post covid has been very good as as you can imagine um we have great products um we're we're in all the best casinos and all the best casinos are performing well recurring revenue is really what's helped us through the pandemic right uh once casinos reopen and uh i i think that we'll 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 prove and show sort of what we're made of and where our strength is uh, as, we, as we begin to report more numbers going forward. And, and I think that rumors and uh, they're, they're, the rumors are cheap, right? Um, buyouts aren't, <laughs> buyouts aren't cheap. So uh, it's a final question. Uh, prospective investor comes to you uh, and he asks why he should uh, invest in um, AGS, and what is your investment thesis? Yeah, I, I think that if an investor uh, sits down with me today, you know, we can talk about, um, you know, you don't want to go down the vortex of the pandemic, right? Because at some point, the pandemic's going to be behind us. Um, you know, there, we, don't have a, a, we don't have a solvency issue. We don't have a liquidity issue. Uh, those aren't something that, you know, AGS is struggling with. I think that the broader market that, that doesn't understand our company can look at it and say, oh, you know, where will AGS be at, at some point in time? And, and the fact is that we're in good financial shape. Um, you know, Chemo, myself, the team focuses on, you know, conserving and preserving cash, if you will. And we've done a great job with that. Uh, we, we, we actually went out and got additional funding during the pandemic, the majority of which we haven't needed to touch, right? Um, the, the product portfolio um, and, and our marketing folks, Julia, you know, our CFO, Chemo, can attest to that, is bigger and better than it's ever been before. And as I said, we have tools that we've never had before to go out there and make money. And even as you mentioned, shufflers and table games, you know, is accelerating for us. Um, this is clearly a point in time where the stock price is overly depressed. The performance is going to come. Um, you know, we've executed uh, in the past and we're going to do it again. And we're going to do it with what I would refer to as the greatest product portfolio 
the company's ever had. So there's really nothing that stands in our way of doing that. We just have to go out and execute. And so the stock is very cheap right now. And I'd say that um, as, as our IR folks can, can confirm, I would say a lot of folks that speak to us right now are, are acutely aware of the fact that the, the stock is cheap at the moment. Okay, well, that's a great overview, David. And with that, I wanna, wanna thank you for your time. Thanks, Frank, appreciate it. Stay safe. You look like you're staying indoors. We appreciate you having us as always. Mm -hmm.